So this is a patch I'm very uh, imaginatively titling Instrument to MIDI. And what it does is translate uh, incoming audio into MIDI signals that can be used by external synths. Uh, so there are a, a couple of controls that I'm going to try and walk through really quickly. Uh, the basic operation is you play something and you hear it on an external synth. I'm using a Bass Station 2 right now. Uh, how the incoming audio, there are a few options there. So one is a sensitivity control, uh, which basically controls uh, how easy it is to trigger the envelopes. Um, this patch uses an onset detector and an envelope follower, and I find that with both a little bit of uh, sensitivity reduction is useful so that it's not just going beep, 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 boop, 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 all the time. Um, this controls the threshold of an audio gate uh, that precedes both of them. So I have it set to what I like. You might want to play around with that. Uh, there's a velocity bypass. It, the, the patch outputs uh, note, gate, and velocity. Uh, on some patches, you may not want velocity because you want a more consistent signal. On others, you might want it as a way to be more articulate. So I'll try and demonstrate the difference a little bit. Uh, then if I bypass velocity, Okay, um, so that gives you the option to bypass velocity. Uh, you know, maybe you you just don't want to use it. Um, and then there's a legato mode, uh, which bypasses the onset detector. And so with the onset the the onset detector on, the purpose of that is to separate all of the notes that you play. So if I play, uh, you know, four notes on the same uh, at the same pitch, they come through as uh, individual notes. Um, but if I play four notes at the same pitch with the legato on, the envelope keeps opening in, in, on its own accord. Uh, and this is useful for... for things other than just playing the same the same note at the same time uh, you know and it depends again on what you want to do you have to be a little bit I think more careful when you're using the non legato mode with your playing I was not careful there uh, and it reflected in in the audio that I produced I'm going to come back to this control in a second. So on the front page are these controls and all of the MIDI routing. Um, at the bottom is the instrument out, um, which is in the default sent to MIDI channel one, but obviously you can change that channel very easily. Uh, you also have a couple of routings that are standardized, but you can also change those. So this is the left stomp switch, and the left stomp switch uh, sends out MIDI sustain uh, on channel 60, or on uh, controller number 64. If I hold this down, the note will drone, uh, and when I release it, it'll let go. Um, you know, you may want to route the left stomp switch to something else, depending on your synth or what you want to do. But that's all right, right there. I put that there so that you could choose what you want to do. Um, here we have the expression pedal, and this is routed to the mod wheel. So that, you know, that depends on what you're uh, using the mod wheel with. And I'm sorry, I only have uh, like 
a shitty volume pedal right now set up for this, so, but... Okay. And then over here, uh, I put in a MIDI looper. Um, so you can record a, a, a MIDI loop, something that'll play over and over and over again on, on the MIDI channel. Uh, and this is the output for the MIDI looper, so you could also conceivably send that to another synth. Um, the base station is monophonic, uh, which is an advantage and a disadvantage with the MIDI looper. I'm going to show that in a second. Um, but if it's a polyphonic synth, then you could record a loop and play over it. Uh, because it'll be able to process the, the two note streams. Um, so I'm going to record something. This uh, corresponds to the middle stomp switch, the, the loop record. And I put that again on the front page. I have it set uh, to latch because that's easier to demonstrate um, when I'm, you know, have the, the Zoya on the table in front of me. Uh, I'm going to load it in default as a momentary because that's if, if I have something on the floor, that's how I like to record. Um, but I'm going to record a loop. And then I can... So this allows it, it essentially mutes it. Uh, it switches the, the CV away from the MIDI output. Um, and when it when it's started again, it starts from the beginning of the loop. So you can also, this is a bad, this is a bad loop for that because I, I was slow to start playing. Uh, but you know, you, you have some options there. It tracks uh, the, the note, um, the gate, the velocity, and it also tracks the expression pedal. So you can do something where you set up a patch where you just have the expression pedal being recorded. And if I press play, we don't hear anything until I start playing notes. See if I can send the expression pedal to something a little easier to hear. Okay, so that's maybe not the most dramatic example, but you could route the expression pedal to something like the filter or, or whatever and record uh, just the, the, the uh, expression pedal sweeps and, and whatnot without recording any notes and then play over top of it, um, which I think, you know, is a cool feature. Uh, I ripped off the idea from Korg, so thanks Korg. Thanks Tats. Um, so that's the, the front page, except for this control. This controls the left mix. So the, the way that it's routed now is that audio comes in the left channel, is analyzed, uh, and goes out the left channel. And you can also route your synth into the right channel, and it goes out the right channel if you want to process them separately, for instance. But if you want to play monophonically, or you or you just want to hear the synth or whatever, you control you can control the mix of the left channel. Um, disable the right channel, or the yeah the right channel, just so we can hear this. Oh, 
Well, that'll cause problems. I did that poorly. I deleted the module. Won't help anything at all. Instead of the connection. So I can increase this. Then all we hear is the turn this up. All we hear is the the sound. And if I hadn't disconnected this, we could hear them from both channels. And the idea here is, you know, first of all, uh, you can use it monophonically, or you can split the signal so that your guitar goes one way and the synth goes another. Uh, the, the other advantage there with just having these routings here, and this is on the second page, the audio routings, uh, you know, there's enough headroom left that you could throw in an effect. I'm not going to be particularly interesting about this, but I'll throw in a ghost verb. People love ghost verb. On the synth side, let me turn this back down. So, That's the instrument to MIDI patch. Um, thank you. So I forgot to show this part, so I'm going to show it now. Uh, I mentioned that there's an advantage with sending the looper uh, to the same channel as the synth, even if the synth is monophonic. Um, and that is because the notes don't play over one another, uh, but depending on how priority is set on the synth, you can interrupt one another. So I have a very basic loop going. So you can see there are some cool opportunities available there. Uh, so even if it's a monophonic uh, synthesizer that you're sending to, like the, the base station, uh, then being able to send two channels at the same time uh, creates some interesting possibilities.